Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today we'll be doing a seven round mock draft before we get started. Just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary NY and if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever it is that you get your podcast. So what I wanted to do today was a seven round mock draft for the New York Jets. Draft is coming up in a couple of weeks, so it's time to start really focusing heavy on this draft content. Now, I didn't use a simulator this time. I have used a bunch of simulators in the past, and the reason for that is because I think they're just way too inconsistent. Guys going all over the place, so this is kind of where I see these players going in what rounds, obviously. So I wanted to do it myself without a simulator because like I said, I just, <laughs> they're not consistent enough for me. Um, and sometimes they get a little wonky. So with that with that said, let's get started. So round one, pick number two overall, I think it's gonna be Zach Wilson, quarterback out of BYU. Could it be Justin Fields? Maybe, but I just think everything is pointing to the direction of Zach Wilson. He should be a really good fit in this offense. And I mean, it just seems like the obvious choice right now. Good arm. He has talked about the San Francisco 49ers as being a good fit, and that offense is going to be very similar to what's being run over here. And the Jets, with trading Sam Darnold, all but confirmed that you're taking a quarterback number two overall. And it just, it seems like, like I said earlier, it just seems like all the signs are pointing towards Zach Wilson, which I'm, I'm a big fan of. And the ceiling is obviously high with him, so Jets go quarterback number two, shocking absolutely no one. Round one, pick 23, the Jets go cornerback Greg Newsom the second out of Northwestern. He's 6'1", 190, has good size, and I mean, the Jets desperately, desperately, desperately need corner help. And I know what some might think and say, how could you not go offense the pick after taking a new quarterback? Pump the brakes. We're going to get back to offense in just a second here. But this is also a huge need because right now the starting outside corner is Bryce Hall and question mark. Like there's really no other guys here. So you have to spend a high end pick on a starting caliber corner, which I think you'd be getting from a guy like Newsom. He's good in zone. He's a really good athlete, which we know Joe Douglas really prioritizes good athletes. He can be physical and just seems like a Douglas and Salah guy. So the, he's been mocked to the Jets a lot at 23, and it just seems to make so much sense because, again, it's all the traits that Joe Douglas tend to, tends to like to draft. And on top of that, it's a massive need. So I think they go corner. Uh, which is really, at this point, the only other position I would consider at 23 other than offensive line. Speaking of offensive linemen, don't you worry. Pick number 34, Creed Humphrey, center from Oklahoma. He's a three-year starter at Oklahoma, a two-year captain. Remember how much last year Joe Douglas valued drafting captains? Hello. Strong hands, really good footwork, and he projects as a long-term starter. And this is like your Nick Mangold in the 2006 NFL draft where they picked him in the first round, and he was their starter for a decade. I, this is the kind of thing Creed Humphrey could be. And I know they didn't attack center in free agency, and a lot of people were saying, oh, it's because they love McGovern at center, which they very well might, but I don't think the beat really knows what Joe Douglas wants. And just Humphrey looks like someone who would be the best value for interior offensive line there. Maybe Wyatt Davis. I, I think his stock is falling a little bit with his injury. I don't think Elijah Vera Tucker is going to be there at 23 or 34. So Creed Humphrey at center, move McGovern over to guard. And then you're getting a little bit of an uh, definitely an upgrade on the offensive line because McGovern would be a better guard than pretty much anything they ran out last year and Humphrey should be able to come in and start from day one round three pick 66 Kenny Gainwell out of Memphis running back he's 5'8 201 so a touch on the smaller side he sat out all of 2020 due to COVID but in 2019 he was absolutely excellent and he is the perfect fit for this offense because he's really good a really good zone runner a uh, really good depth to that running back room and he could potentially be a starter which honestly I think this put <laughs> pushes LaMichael P. Ryan further down the pecking order and potentially off the roster, but I don't see him as a fit in this offense. Gainwell, Ty Johnson, Tevin Coleman, that would be my running back trio right there, and I think it's a damn good one, and I would not be shocked if the Jets look to add a running back who's really good in zone in this draft and somewhere between round three and round five, and to me, Gainwell is the perfect fit for this offense. Okay, round three, pick 86, Nico Collins, wide receiver out of Michigan. Now, he's tall, a big receiver, 6'4", 215, but his speed is phenomenal. He has really good speed for his size. He's very good at tracking the deep ball, which 
which is something that Zach Wilson likes to do. He likes to put the ball down the field, and he's very good at at those 50-50 balls, which seems like a perfect fit for a guy like Zach Wilson who likes to get the ball down the field, number one. And for a young quarterback, you want to get your wide receivers to be good at 50-50 balls. Corey Davis is good at that. Denzel Mims is good at that. Nico Collins is good at that. Heck, even the guy they just brought in from Jacksonville is good at that. So this would just add to an already pretty solid wide receiver room and push guys like Braxton Berrios, Jeff Smith, Vincent Smith further down the depth chart and the pecking order, which is a good thing, let's be honest. Round four, pick 107. I'm going Monty Rice, linebacker out of Georgia. He's a touch on the smaller side at 6'1", 235, but he's very fast, good in pursuit, and he's good at forcing fumbles. So he's a really good tackler, good in a run defense. He he really played in a 3-4, but he can also play in a 4-3. And I think this would just be good depth behind C.J. Mosley, who I fully expect to start this year. But the Jets need help at this linebacker position. And with his speed, I think that's something that uh, Robert Sala would fall in love with. In the fourth round, I think it's pretty good value. Do I expect him to come in and be a playmaker right away? No, but I think he could be better depth than what they have. Like Blake Cashman can't stay on the field. So trusting him to be behind, I, I as the number two inside linebacker, I personally wouldn't do. But a guy like Monty Rice... I could probably survive with that. Round five, pick 146. I'm going offensive guard from Notre Dame, Tommy Kramer. Four-year starter at Notre Dame, produced a t- which has produced a ton of offensive line talent. He's played tackle earlier in his collegiate career, then moved over to guard, and really has good size for a guard. He was injured in 2019, which I think is part of the reason why his stock is falling a little bit. And like when you're getting a guy in the fifth round, probably not a day one starter, but a high ceiling kind of a guy who's someone who can come in and probably start so i would like to see at this point because we they haven't addressed offensive guard in free agency to draft one and have them compete so cam clark and kramer could absolutely compete alex lewis i don't see being here at the start of the season maybe greg van roten sticks on the on on the line and he beats out the job but they really need depth at the interior offensive line because they've signed a bunch of nobodies in free agency and guys who aren't starting level players uh so i think it's important to draft two interior offensive linemen i have one in round two and in round five with the Jets' other round five pick i have them going carry vincent who is a slot corner from lsu He's, he has an average size for a slot, but he is a great athlete. Again, something Robert Sala prioritizes and something that Joe Douglas prioritizes. He can also play safety, which could be a potential benefit. Uh, now, a negative is you can get a little bit grabby at times, but I mean, when you're looking at prospects in round four and beyond, like there's reasons why they are in the in the fourth round. There's potential there. There is, but of course, there are potential red flags too, like getting a little bit grabby, but We've seen, um, we've seen Robert Sala get a ton of value out of those corners in the late rounds and mid rounds and stuff like that. So just adding depth at slot, so him and Javelin Gidry at this point would be potential slot guys. We'll see what they can do there. Round six, pick one eighty six. I have Peyton Hendershot, tight end from Indiana, six four two fifty. He's an athletic tight end, which would be a nice addition to the receiving group to go with Chris Herndon. I think he would is a guy who would benefit from mo- multiple tight end sets. He's good, really good yard after the catch, good in the red zone. So just adding another target there would be really good because I don't really love the Jets depth chart beyond, beyond Chris Herndon. Like I don't think Ryan Griffin can play anymore. Uh, Trevon Wesco, I think is extremely overrated. Uh, so adding a guy like Kendra shot in the late rounds with some upside as a receiver, I think would be really interesting. With the Panthers round six pick that you got in the Darnold trade, I would go with Wyatt Hubert. Edge from Kansas State, phenomenal motor. He really needs to get better with his hands. And ironically, NFL.com comped him. His player comp was to John Franklin Myers, who obviously Jets fans know very well and like a lot. So a developmental edge to go behind the Vinnie Currys, to go behind, um, obviously, Carl Lawson and stuff like that, who could potentially develop with Bryce Huff. I think it's worthwhile swing at that point. So just to recap the class, we have Zach Wilson um, in round one, Greg Newsom in round one as well, Creed Humphrey, the center from Oklahoma at pick 34, Kenny Gainwell, the running back from Memphis, pick 66, the other third round pick, Nico Collins, wide receiver from Michigan, round four, pick 107, Monty Rice, round five, pick 146, Tommy Kramer, offensive guard from Notre Dame. Round five, pick 154, uh, Carrie Vincent, cornerback from LSU. Peyton Hendershot in round six, and Wyatt Hubert Edge from Kansas State to round out the draft class. So let me know how did I do in the comments down below or on social media at Matt O'Leary NY. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you next time.